All right. Good morning. We're we're on we're on the the tower. Yeah. Okay. And you are the you're the air boss. I'm the air boss. I'm board uh, USS Arlington. I apologize about the radios going. That's gonna it, it makes great ambiance. There you go. There you it's go. Happen the whole time. And, and, that, and and people will know that my engineer didn't stick that in. It's just like they did not. He's here for real. I As Grace notes right yeah. like that. All right. So what are we going to see today? So some helicopters are going to come in, or at least one. We just have one coming in with uh, with some passengers. Uh, my understanding, members of the media who are coming to join us for Fleet Week. Uh, Obviously, welcome aboard. With weather today, it's going to be a little more challenging, but hopefully we can find a way to get them through the clouds and on the deck safely. All right. So give me, like, sort of the chronology of, of, of events. Um, you're the air boss, so do you have to answer to anybody, or like, you know, like the people who are steering the ship or anything like that, or are you the, the main guy that everybody has to, like, you know, adhere to? Oh, no. Okay, so the officer of the deck, the person on the bridge, it owns, owns the ship at that okay. point. So we're, uh, if you will, a subordinate controlling station to them. Um, and, however, they uh, they do a great job supporting us. They'll they'll maneuver the ship into the winds, the envelope. They're the ones worrying about the ship's position relative to other ships in the sea space. Uh, so we answer to them in that sense. They uh, but they work very well with us to make sure we get what we need to get the aircraft in. So ex- where are we exactly? And could you give me the idea of where we are in position and wind and how that affects everything that you do? So we're working our way uh, with the other ships into New York at this point. So we're getting ready to do this parade of sail. Uh, right now, the winds are, are very cooperative for our position, which is great. Otherwise, we would have to veer out of formation to go get the winds in the envelope. But it just so happens that the direction we're going is working perfectly for the winds to come on an approach. What we need are the winds on this ship. We need the winds slightly offset to approximately 45-ish degrees. Uh, gets us down the pipe for a good approach. Right. So then, what is the level of your communication with, say, like Pier Six? Uh, you know, or, or do you? I mean, how does it work in terms of you talking either to the pilot or the the, the, the flight control officers uh, where they're taking off from before they come back? Right now, I'm in email comms with uh, someone on the deck who's letting me know what time they launched and, and what their intentions are. I don't yet have radio communications with the aircraft. Once they uh, they'll call in, they'll they'll start calling in as soon as they get close once they do that we'll establish what we call two-way comms we're both talking to each other uh, and then I'll, I'll talk them in the whole rest of the way right. now who are the people who support the landing there's the guys with the yellow which is the lso's and then the guys in the blue that like tie down the wheels i think so yeah so let's start with uh, lieutenant justin pickworth over here he's uh, the mini boss you, you do a year on this ship you do a year as the mini boss and then a year as the air boss plus or minus a few months and on the deck i've got uh, chief shalfo who's uh, my lead down there he's in charge of the the entire flight deck and flight deck safety uh we also have uh, guys in blue shirts they're gonna do chalk and chain and uh, there are guys in red uh, who are there as a firefighting crew in case of a mishap uh we also have guys in yellow that's the lse so they're gonna visually be an aid for the aircraft coming in and then a few folks in other colors uh white is gonna be safety um, there's gonna be a medical corpsman on station again just in case there was a mishap i think that hits everybody oh and purple uh our fuel guys, so if the aircraft needed gas. So can you walk us through the mission today? What, uh, what's, what's involved um, from beginning to end to get the aircraft from Pier 6? Uh, so they got, a, they got a launch from uh, the helipad that I understand is out near Wall Street. Mm-hmm. So they're going to launch from the helipad there and uh, honestly just fly to us. Mm-hmm. And then once they pick up, we have a, a what's called a tack hand. It's a radio beacon that communicates with a receiver on the aircraft. So... Once they've picked that up, it'll it'll help vector them into where the ship is, and then they'll let me know when they have a visual on me, if they visually see me, and at that point, uh, we'll just clear them into land, provided the winds are in the envelope. And what's different about landing an aircraft um, on a ship compared to landing it on land? Well, one, a ship does not st- stay stable like land does. Uh, so we've got, there are, today, the seas are great, but there have been times when, uh, you know, it's been pitching or rolling, uh, to a point that it's not safe to land the aircraft. Plus, from uh, on land, typically with the way runways are set up at airports, or especially a helipad, it's much easier to orient yourself into the wind. Here, we actually have to move the airport to get into the wind, as opposed to land where they just move the aircraft. So it's a little more challenging. And how many sailors uh, total are involved in operating this mini airport on the back of the ship? Uh, we have about almost 30 on hand. Uh, with uh, my crew and the, other, the ones that the other departments augment. And it's relatively smooth out there today. What, Change uh, course 308. What, what, what's the sort of outer envelope of, um, of 
sea conditions that you can safely uh, land and and uh, and uh, take aircraft off. If the ship is pitching, meaning moving uh, front to back, fore aft, if it's pitching more than two degrees, we won't do it. If it's rolling left or right more than four degrees, we won't do it. Even in even in a um, combat situation, I. If we have troops in combat or there's a, an emergency situation, then, you know, deviating from those procedures, that might happen. But that's a, that's a, everybody makes a decision at that point. So the aircraft commander, the captain of the ship, if the uh, detachment on board has an officer in charge, and then uh, us in the tower, we'll all talk before we're going to deviate from the pub. If possible, we, we don't want to do that. And what about, uh, can you can you tell us about the different kinds of aircraft that you land here and 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 particular challenges or you know tactics that may be different from a B-22 say as opposed to a Cobra? Uh, as far as my end is concerned, the tactics really aren't different. They have different envelopes and different restrictions that uh, that that are specific to that aircraft. If it's got a, a rotary wing, we can land just about anything on here. So uh, landing a B-22, we we did it you know just a few weeks ago. Uh, we're, the ship is designed to take Marines, so any type of Marine aircraft will, will come aboard here. So what are the greatest challenges for you in terms of Fleet Week, in terms of all the, the landings, other, other than just the weather? I think the, the planning process is, is the most important and I would argue the most challenging. If the planning process goes well, then uh, generally we're prepared to, to handle most contingencies. If we don't have good planning, then it, you know, it turns into a much more dynamic situation. So one, one question about the actual landing process. What is the level of communication, if any, between you and the LSC? Or is, at some point, does the LSC just take over and he's the one who <clears throat> lands it? Uh, so one of us generally takes external communications and one of us takes internal. And we trade off to, you know, really so we both get to do everything. Uh, and so one of us will be talking to the LSC, letting them know what, what the aircraft's intentions are when they're on final. And then at some point, yeah, when after I've cleared them to land, they're just watching the LSC. Okay. Can you tell us about um, this room? What, what, what are the what's the main technology that you are you know that's that's supporting you in what, you know what you see out there? So honestly, I'm, I'm relying on, in, in our tower. I'm relying on uh, uh, a lot of the operations team who has the radar picture and things like that to feed me information. Uh, my main tool is, is looking at the winds. I have different things I can do to manipulate, you know, lights on the flight deck, that kind of thing. But mainly I'm, I'm concerned about the winds and the envelope. They, uh, once, they, once the aircraft reports in, then, then really the radar picture is not as important. So, so will, they, uh, will the pilot communicate exclusively, exclusively with you, or will they be speaking to both you and, and the bridge? So they, they're only communicating with one person at a time. They check in with uh, one of our watch standards in combat first, combat, and then okay. they'll hand it off to tower. I see. And then once uh, once they're with us, they'll communicate directly solely with tower. But the bridge and combat are both listening in, so everybody knows what's going on. <laughs> but just for the right, what's your name? Uh, Jeff Cliff, Lieutenant Jeff Cliff. <laughs> And you're, and you're from? I'm from Urbana, Illinois. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for telling us what it's like to be an air boss. Thanks. And uh, to the city of New York, we're really excited. Thanks for hosting us. Uh, look forward to meeting all of you. And on behalf of the media, thanks for hosting us. It's been yeah. a- Oh, and let me get my uh, mini boss a quick hey to Lieutenant uh, Justin Pickworth. Where are you from? Uh, originally Detroit, Michigan. All right. Cool. Welcome to New York. Thank Welcome you very to New York. much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>